We're making some good progress on this photo booth as this is part three. Hey up guys, if you missed part one and two, get your butt back over to those episodes so you aren't sat here wondering what the heck we're talking about. Remember where we were from last time? Well, I still need to cut the hole for the external flash. Now, I need to talk to you about slots. What? No, I definitely said slots. Yeah, I said slots. As you can see, you need special tooling for your router to do this. A standard size slot cutter won't do. You need one specifically sized for the job. And they can be hard to find, so I've dropped a link in the description of where I bought mine. Trust me, it will save you some time. The trick to getting this right is a balance of measuring and trial and error. I fully recommend starting with your 18mm thick back panel, but practicing on an off cut of the same size first. Set your bit size and then do a cut. Stick in some T molding and see if it marries up flush on both sides. If it doesn't, adjust the router bit height until it does. Okay, let's get this wood nice and erect. I wanted the stands to be made from metal and have some casters on the bottom so that it could easily be wheeled around and positioned. However, looking back, my choice of using mild steel was a poor one. I wish I'd taken more care in considering weight as steel is very heavy and it added a huge amount to the machine. To combat this, I made it detachable. Once everything was welded up, I could figure out how the stand would fit onto the base of the photo booth. I finally got the stand on and everything was in place when I discovered that although the flash fits the hole, it isn't spaced correctly for the hot shoe. This meant that I needed to adapt the flash in order for it to connect to the camera. a cheap kids ruler and measured up the printer so I knew where the hole needed to be. I sanded down the machine and painted it white. I used undercoat to try and prevent the MDF from soaking up all the paint. I wanted the finish to be smooth so I cycled between painting and sanding to try and achieve this. Paint, sand, paint, sand, it went on and on. After realising that I wasn't going to get what I wanted, I landed on the idea of wrapping the pod in vinyl wrap. This would give the glossy appearance that I wanted and it would also mask any joints or screw holes. I'd never used vinyl wrap before and I'll never use it again. Using this stuff is difficult if you're inexperienced, like I am.
I wanted the faceplate to be held on with bolts. So I clamped it to the machine, plotted and drilled the holes. Using a wooden mallet covered with a soft cloth, hammered in the T-molding on the back panel. I was impressed with how this looked as it framed the machine really well. I left the T-molding on the front panel for later as I still had some work to do first. I vinyl wrapped the doors so that they matched and then I fitted the hinges. I then got the doors on. I decided that the faceplate needed to hug the machine a little closer, so I used some double-sided sticky tape. This helped the Perspex sit closer to the MDF so that it can still be covered by the T-molding. Now, you know when something's going too well and you feel like something bad is going to happen? The doors don't close, guys. The doors don't close. So, all of this happened. this thing is supposed to be portable, we need to strap in the printer. I used straps so that the printer can still be removed for maintenance. I also kept this in mind when I made the shelf for the laptop to sit on. Are you still there? Because if you've made it this far, you're only one episode away from the end. Probably. Now do me a favour and give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Let me know what you think about the build so far in the comments below. And don't forget, if you're building a photo booth like this one, I've loaded the description with some helpful links. So go check that out and I'll see you in part four.